All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kudobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Smart Parts, which was originally made back in 2013 by forum user Fearoff, but has since been taken over by forum user Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a series of parts which allow you a near unprecedented amount of control over your vessel. These parts can do near anything from regulate fuel flow to conditional staging and action group triggering and oh, oh so much more, basically allowing you to automate certain functions of your ship without having to delve into the complexity of a mod like KOS, which some of you may be familiar with. So let's jump right on into the VAB and have a gander at what all makes this mod possible, and we'll start out by taking a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison sake, and then typing into the search bar, Orbital Intelligence, which will bring up all the parts for the mod, and I love that that actually works in the search bar for this one, it's always a good thing. And we'll start off by looking at the fuel parts for this mod, as they are mm, basically the most simple parts, as they do one thing and one thing alone. And we'll start with the fuel flow breaker, which comes in a variety of sizes, starting in the 1.25, and then the 1.87. 2.5 and finally the 3.75 size and what these will do is they allow you to enable or disable the crossfeed into your ship. So basically, whichever section of your ship is cut off by one of these will enable the crossfeed between those two sections. And that is a very useful thing to be able to do because you don't always want to be using up all of your ship's fuel for a variety of reasons such as balance during takeoff. So this gives you that control to only use fuel from certain parts of the ship at certain times. And you can disable or again enable the crossfeed crossfeed by right clicking on one of these and actually toggling it right here or of course adding it to an action group which is always convenient to do so you can just click on that and add it right there and so now whenever you hit one it will disable the crossfeed or enable it between the two parts of the ship that are separated by the fuel flow breaker and it's just a very, very useful tool for controlling where and when the fuel is in your ship. And that's quite nice. Now, of course, these are for inline sections of your ship. What if you have radial fuel tanks? Well, that is where the KM fuel controller comes in. And let's imagine that the command pod here is our radial fuel tank. What you would do is you would attach to it the KM fuel controller again on the radial fuel tank and then go to your fuel line and attach it to the fuel controller and then to the main central body of your ship. And now you can control the fuel going into this line by enabling or disabling the crossfeed on the fuel controller. So again, it gives you that extra bit of control of when the fuel is used in your ship. And I just love having that ability because it's it's just good to have. Now, of course, what if you don't want to stop the fuel flow, but instead you actually want to just get rid of all your fuel in general? Well, that's where these two valves down here come in. We have the V1 valve and the V2 valve. And what these will do is when they are toggled either by an action group right clicking on them in flight or even as you can see down here by staging them they will basically expel all the fuel out of whichever tanks they are attached to and you can control how quickly that fuel is ejected by this outlet bar right here so the greater this is the faster that fuel is just going to be expelled out from the valve and the reason why we have two is because of a fun little feature as the fuel is being expended it actually does create a tiny little amount of thrust and so you can either choose to have have it be expelled out the bottom 
or out the side to just depend on where you want that thrust to go. Now again, it is a tiny, tiny amount of thrust. It's not even listed in here if we right click for stats, uh, but it is there nonetheless. And what's fun is if you don't want it to be enabled by the staging over here, you can turn that on or off by this button there. So then you can only activate it by an action group or of course, again, right clicking in flight. Again, a very useful tool to have. Now, the next thing we'll look at is uh, the more complicated bits. Let's actually dump all these fuel things off of here because we don't need them anymore. And what the rest of the parts do in the game is, or in the mod rather, is they will actually trigger an action group or the staging of your craft by a certain criteria. Now the fuel ones you had to activate by either an action group or staging, with these, they will do that staging for you. And the first one is by time. We have the timed action group trigger here, and if we pop that onto the vessel, what it will do is once this has been activated, either by activating it from an action group or from the staging of your craft, it will count down a certain amount of time which you set by here. So we can either do it by seconds and we can click and drag this to change the seconds or of course use these buttons on the side and we can increase it by one second or up to 20 seconds at a time with this button. And we can even switch it to minutes right here and once it's activated, it will just count down that amount of time, and then, once it reaches zero, it will either stage, as you can see right here, or if we click this button, instead of staging, it could activate group one, or group two, three, four, five, six, etc., all the way up to the preset groupings like lights, RCS, SAS, brakes, abort, gears, etc. So whatever grouping or staging you want to activate, it will do once it reaches zero. And this is a very, very useful tool. We'll show it off in a little bit once we go outside. Now the next one we have is activated by your actual altitude. It is an altimeter action grouping. And for this, just like time, you set either meters, which you can adjust here in increments of 25, or with this button in increments of 200, you can either go with meters, or if we hit this button here, by kilometers, and once you reach that specific altitude, it will again either stage or activate an action group. But what's really cool about this is it has an extra level of control. Now right now on this section right here, it has trigger on, all. So basically, whenever we hit 25 kilometers, it will trigger a stage or an action group. But if we click this button, it will only trigger if we're ascending to 25 kilometers. So on takeoff, once we reach 25 kilometers, it will do a thing. Or if we're wanting it to trigger on a lander, we can click this again for descent. So as we are plummeting towards the planet and we reach 25 kilometers, it will go off, and that is wonderful. And what's great is if you don't want it to go off, you can actually activate it or deactivate it with this button. So if uh, you want the specific thing to trigger at a specific planet and your lander is gonna go to multiple planets, you can turn this on or off. And we also have an auto reset button here. So if you do want this action to repeat every time you reach that point, you can have it auto reset, which is defaulted to off, but you turn it to true and so say on a lander you could set it to every time you're descending to whatever altitude it will always re or always open the parachute and then you can pack it all up send the lander back into orbit land on another place it'll do it all over again it's wonderful now the next part we have is a fuel sensor and this activates again either a stage or an action group whenever the resource which in this case since we're attached to a command pod can either be electric charge or our mono repellent whenever that reaches zero 
then it will activate that stage or action group. So it will only activate once it is depleted by default, or we can change this percentage here. So if we wanted to uh, say, for instance, you could have it on your electric charge. Once your electric charge hits uh, empty or half full or whatever you want it to be, it'll then activate action group one, which will open up your solar panels, which is a great idea. So you can change it to either empty or whatever percentage in between. And that is wonderful. And again, you can turn it on and or off right here if you don't want it to work at that point in time. Now, the next one we have is a proximity sensor. And uh, this one's a fun one. Basically, what this one does is it has different channels. And you would have this proximity sensor on this ship and then another proximity sensor on another ship. And they would both be on the same channel, which is anything from 1 to 20. And once two proximity sensors meet within a certain distance, it will then activate a stage or a grouping on both of those crafts. And again, like with the distance one, we can set it to either approach, departure, or either or of those things happening. We can auto reset it and have it activated on or off. This one's actually quite a fun one. I had fun uh, with a space station earlier with this. I had it so that it would automatically enable the fuel flow on one of these things to a docking port when a ship actually approached the docking port. It was just a fun, weird, random little thing to do, but it's a possibility of something you can do with this. Now, the next one we have is the uh, radio controller and this one is quite a fun one because it actually will control another craft again we have channels 1 through 20 and you would have a radio on your craft and also on another craft and you can sync the heading here with this button so whatever heading you are pointing towards the other craft will point towards that heading as well you can also send commands for staging or action groups to the other craft you can also you can't see it here but when you're actually flying you can also uh, force it to match your throttle. In here, we can only control if we want it to have a certain percentage of our throttle. And yeah, it's a wonderful thing that you basically you can make another ship do the same thing you are doing. Again, so long as you're both on the same channel. And finally, the last one we have is the speed speedometer. Speedometer. That's probably a better way to say it. I don't know where my brain was today. And like with the altimeter one, this will activate, but instead of a, doing it at a certain altitude, it will do it at a certain speed. So once you hit that speed, it will stage or do an action group. And again, we can either set it to any time we hit that speed or only on increasing towards that speed or descending to that speed. So whatever you want to do, it will make it trigger. And that is fun. So let's actually take a look at a couple of crafts I made to demonstrate this thing. So we'll take a look at the fuel test one first to get that out of the way, as it is the simplest of them. And we'll go to launch. And this one basically makes use of all of the different fuel components and also the fuel sensor. Now, basically what we have here is normally with how all of this is set up, this engine down at the bottom would use fuel from all four of these tanks. But I have a fuel flow breaker right here and I have a fuel controller right here, both of which are turned off. So if we throttle up and activate the engine, this is the only tank that is losing fuel. But if we look at this one, we can toggle this on or off and notice right now, this isn't using any fuel, but if I hit two, which is the action group I set the fuel breaker to, if we hit two and uh, actually turn this one off so it's not using that fuel, there we go, we're now using fuel from this top container. And we could always hit two again, and that stops the fuel flow, and now it's only using it from the main tank here. And we can alternatively hit the one key to actually start this one over here from coming on, because I've set this fuel connector to one. Or of course we could toggle it right here, either way you want to go. 
And it's, it's just a convenient feature, again, to control from where exactly fuel is being taken from on your ship at any given point in time. Now, what if, say, once these fuel tanks are empty, we want it to automatically decouple? Well, that is where, say, the fuel action group scanner comes into play, as right now it is waiting for the fuel to be zero on these radial tanks, and once it reaches zero, it will automatically stage and thus release these glorious things here, but first we need to lose the fuel. And so we have these valves here and here. And if I stage, as you can see, to turn on these valves, there we go, they are emptying all the fuel from this thing, and once these reach zero, there we go, excellent. The radial tanks automatically get ejected off and we're good to go. So there you are, you got to solve the fuel controller, the uh, fuel breaker, the valves for emptying the fuel, and the fuel sensor. So let's revert flight back to the vehicle assembly building and go to our next test craft, which, oh god, what did I call this one? I'm already forgetting. Oh boy, oh, I built this thing like an hour ago. I really should remember this. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Ah, there it is. Speed, time, and altimeter. So we're testing, again, three different things on this. We're testing the speed triggering, time triggering, and the altitude triggering. And let's go to the launch pad with this. And basically what this rocket will do is I will hit spacebar once. This thing will take off, and once it reaches a thousand meters, it will automatically decouple these two radial uh, solid rocket boosters. And once these decouple, these timers will activate and two seconds later, the solid rocket boosters will open their parachutes. Again, that's why I love all these different timer things and not just the timers, but the altimeters, all of them they're always working even if they're not attached to your vessel. So these SRBs will detach two seconds later, they will release their parachutes. Then finally, we will cut off the engine, and once we slow down to 50 meters per second, it will then activate our parachute. So let us uh, launch, and yeah, I should only have to press spacebar once to take off, and then I will also cut the throttle. Let's throttle all the way up and activate. And there we go. We are flying upwards and we should reach a thousand. There we go. They release. You just heard the parachutes go and let us cut the engine. And as we slow, I probably should have cut the engine sooner, but as we slow down to 50, there we go. The parachute opened up. And now we're descending back down to the heavens, and those SRBs should also be gently gliding back down to the surface, hopefully. <laughs> so long as they all went well, they haven't exploded on the ground yet. Yes, I can actually see their shadows there. They are gently falling via parachute again, thanks to those timers. And there we are. We can see them on either side of us as we pass them. Oh god, open, open, open. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, I hit spacebar to start the engines, and then I cut the engines, and that was it. Everything else, the staging of releasing the SRBs, them then opening up their parachutes, and finally, this parachute opening once we slowed down to 50 meters per second, all happened thanks to those triggering items. And that... That is wonderful. And explosion, of course. Let's uh, revert back to space plane hangar. Or not space plane hangar, vehicle assembly building. And let's actually just leave. And I now have two rovers out here for the last test. And these will test the remote capabilities as well as the proximity capabilities. So if I just get into this little crappy rover I built in a couple of seconds and turn off its brake. And oh god, I should really... There we go. Okay, we're not cl too close yet. Now what I can do is actually let's stop and uh, turn a little bit more. There we go. So we're about 20 meters away. And if I look at our radio right here, these are the controls for the radio. So what we can do, we're both on channel one right now, and I can turn on 
the synchronized heading. So that that thing, it actually is trying to move. It's kind of hard to see because I may have actually turned on its brake, but it is trying to move so that it can match our current heading. And we can actually tell ourselves to match the heading as well by clicking this button. And we can also transmit the throttle so that it knows to match our same throttle speed. Now, since we're rovers, throttle speed doesn't matter, but if you were, say, to things just floating around in space or two space planes, whatever, transmitting the throttle would be a very important thing to be able to do. And you can always synchronize the heading, or if you don't synchronize the heading, you can just click the match heading and you're good to go. But finally, we have the transmit command, which if, oh, actually I should probably quick save. Oh, I loaded the quick save. <laughs> Wrong button, but Oh uh, boy, yep, yep, okay, let me make sure, oh yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I hit the wrong key. I always do that, whenever I try and load or un or uh, save things, I always click the wrong one, it never fails. But we can still do the same thing I wanted to do, and that is if we go to this, I, oh god, I clicked out of it. Man, this is not going well for me today with the transmitting here. On the transmit, if I transmit this code, notice I have solar rocket boosters on the side of this thing. So does he. And away he goes. <laughs> so I can do that to my rover or whatever else. And again, I can send whatever command I want. And we can even change it here while we're playing. So we can change it to action groups, etc. Or of course for me, staging so that he goes away and is going to explode in a fiery ball of doom. And goodbye. There he goes. Oh, he didn't explode. Interesting. Now, what's fun about this uh, remote control system is that it will actually work with any craft, again, that has the same channel as you, within two kilometers. So a thousand freaking meters, and you will be able to actually still control them. Again, with sinking the heading, throttle, forcing them to do certain commands, whatever you want to do. Now, if I actually do reload the quick save, which is what I was supposed to do after the last demo. The next is proximity. If I actually turn this down because 50 was way too far and put it to say five meters, once we get within five meters of this other ship here, both of us, I believe, if I'm remembering this correctly, both of us should stage, which means both of us will take off with our little uh, things here. So again, just a simple demonstration, but five meters. Oh, nope, it was just me. <laughs> I may have uh, messed up a setting on him, uh, but yes, once we're within five meters, uh, it will do the staging. Again, it takes a little trial and error to actually get it all correctly working all the time. As well, even though it seems simple on each of these functions, you can do a lot of complicated things with all of them. And it's just a really fun and useful mod. You can do some crazy complicated things with just a few parts and a little bit of logic. Because basically the parts are an if-then statement and your action groups and uh, things like that are your variables. And that is how you mess around with these. And it is quite cool. So if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, and I would definitely suggest you go and give it a try, you can take a look at the link in the description as well. Ways. And if you make anything cool with it, I would love to see it, my friends. Any crazy contraptions you build with these, I'd love for some fun ideas of what I could make myself. Uh, so please do send them to me by tweet or Facebook, what have you. And of course, I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.